Looking at the income tax formula, we're focused in once again, line one, that being income. Remember that the first half of the income tax formula is in essence an income statement, although a strange one where we have income up top, the equivalent of the expenses being the deductions, getting us down to the equivalent of net income, that being here, taxable income. Our goal being the opposite of normal goals because it's taxes. That being to have the taxable income as low as possible. Therefore, when looking at line one, we want to determine is something income? If it is income, is it something that we have to include as taxable income? Now we're talking about the social security benefits at this point in time. Quick recap on a couple things on the social security benefit program. Obviously there's two sides that we usually think about. One being our working years where the social security taxes are bad because we have to pay them into the system and that's gonna be the social security. We usually kind of clump them together with social security and Medicare type of payments that we're paying. They're coming out of our W-2s uh, wages or and or they're coming out of our social security uh, self-employment uh, taxes that we might pay if we have a sole proprietor type of business. And, th and then in retirement years, we might get distributions from the plan. That's what we're talking about now because now money is coming in. There's all this new money coming in. And it's not in. And we're thinking, is it something that we have to include in income? Now, just notice that Social Security is a little bit strange because you might think, hey, look, I already kind of earned the income and then I paid it in to the, the Social Security program and now I'm getting it back. So let's just do a quick kind of recap on the structure or how Social Security came about. Uh, and then we'll get into to the taxation applied to it and it might make a little bit more sense. You might be able to kind of get a story which will help you to memorize uh, the way the taxation is going to work. So when Social Security was put in place, it was it happened like in the 1930s in the Great Depression with when a lot of these laws came into play. And a lot of people, I think, when it first came into play, thought of it more as kind of a welfare program, meaning we're going to be helping the people that are not able to pay for their own retirement, possibly because they lived past their life expectancy or they had some type of tragedy happened. And therefore, when you're paying into that kind of program, your general thought process is, I don't expect to be benefiting from this program. I expect it to be just benefiting the people that need this program. It's a welfare type of program kind of system. However, then it seems to have morphed over time so that the taxes have gone up and up and it's now kind of thought of they're kind of advertising it from the government standpoint as though it's like a government retirement plan employment and a 401k retirement plan which would then think that everybody no matter how much income you have would get benefits from it which is kind of the system that is going to be set up meaning we're putting money in and the more money you put in if it was just a normal kind of retirement plan you would think the more benefits you should get in the payout when they pay out the benefits. So now we've got this kind of mix between those two objectives. So the more money you put into the system during your working years, which means you're gonna put more in if your income is higher because it's, it's you're gonna have a higher tax that you're gonna be paying uh, as your income goes up, then your benefits will go up in general. The calculation of your benefits will take into consideration that you paid more in. However, it also has some welfare components meaning that the more income you put in on the higher side of things, the less added benefit that you're going to get from those payments, right? And so you're actually, so, that, so that's how kind of the benefit payments kind of are calculated in general. And then when you get the payments, they can also kind of put in play this mix between the payments being a welfare program versus a retirement program. And basically saying if your income is below a certain threshold, then you may not be taxed. You might have an exemption of the taxation of, of these payments. But if your income is higher, then they're going to tax more of the, of the income that you got from the Social Security up to 85%, uh, I believe. That's the general rule. Okay, so we're going to be focused focus, focus, focus. in on the uh, Social Security, which is down here on line six of page one of the form 1040. If you look at the actual tax software, then it'll it'll give you this kind of worksheet to determine how much of the, of the social security is taxable. The general question that will come up is, you know, if I get social security, how much of it is gonna be taxable? 
That's gonna, how much do I have to include as taxable income? And the general rule is going to be, well, if you have a substantial amount of taxable income in your retirement years, it's going to be up to 85%. That's what you want to kind of keep in your mind as the general rule. You're going to be paying like at up to 85% of the of the, uh, the Social Security. So, and remember when you're talking about Social Security payments, you're usually talking about people that are in, of course, their retirement years and they're getting uh, the Social Security payments. So you would expect then they wouldn't have a lot of W-2 income at that point in time. You would expect they're not at their peak working years in terms of earning years. So you might deal with taxpayers at that point in time where the Social Security is, their, is like their main form of income or they might have other things that they're depending on to live on that aren't taxable, which means you're talking about people that might have a lower uh, tax uh, taxable amount, or you might be talking to more well-off individuals who may not have W-2 income at that point, but they still have a substantial amount of income coming from and out of like IRAs, so 1099 Rs, and from investments in the form of dividends and uh, interest. And in that case, you would expect they would be being taxed at the max of their social security benefits, 85% included in income. That's not the rate. That's how much you'd have to include in income to then be subject to the tax rates in the progressive tax system, ordinary tax rates. Okay, so you will pay tax on only 85% of your social security benefits based on the Internal Revenue Service IRS rules. If you, this is from the social security uh, website, by the way, instead of the IRS website, uh, file a federal tax return as an individual or your combined income is between 25,000 and 34,000, uh, you may have to pay income tax on up to 50% of your benefits. More than 34,000, up to 85% of your benefits may be taxable. So generally, if your income is a little bit lower, then you might be paying up to 50%. But if your income is you know, significant, still a fairly low bar, then you're gonna be paying you know, up to 85% included in income. File a joint return. Uh, and you and your spouse have a combined income that is, now we're talking about a married filing joint, between 32,000 and 44,000, you may have to pay income tax on up to 50% of your benefits, more than 44,000, up to 85% of your benefits may be taxable. Uh, if you're married uh, filing separate returns, you probably pay taxes. Remember that uh, married filing separate, the, the government is often skeptical of that filing position, people taking it possibly in order to try to take advantage of some of these uh, income threshold rules. So they often adjust it in an unfavorable way for those filing married filing separate. So be aware. Okay, so line 6A, 6B, and 6C, line 6A, 6B, Social Security Benefits. Uh, you should receive a form SSA 1099. So that's the type of form that, that you're going to be receiving. It's a 1099 type form, which is an indication of saying, oh, this might be income that I have to be reporting, just like other types of 1099s. Showing in box three, the total Social Security benefits paid to you. Box four will show the amount uh, of any benefits you repaid in 2022. If you received railroad retirement benefits treated as Social Security, you should receive a form uh, RRB 1099. Use the Social Security benefits worksheet in these instructions to see if any of your benefits are taxable. So exception. Do not use the Social Security Benefit Worksheet in these instructions if any of the following applies. You made contributions to a traditional IRA for 2022 and you or your spouse were covered by a retirement plan at work or through a self-employment. Instead, use the worksheet on Publication 590A to see if any of your Social Security benefits are taxable and to figure your IRA deduction. 